today for Oklahoma State is going to be the transfer from McNeese, Jillian Poulard. Yesterday had the two RBI double that gave Oklahoma State the lead for just a little bit before Iowa State reclaimed it in the sixth inning as she'll get started here for the Cowgirls. As you can see, but along with Poulard, it is then Tim, Wong, Davis, Godwin, McDonald, Wark, Graf, and rounded out by Bloodworth at the nine spot. 1-1 one, one count here early between Skirman and Poulard. A huge key to the game today for Oklahoma State is going to be pitch selection. On Friday, they were really getting behind in counts, 0-2 counts, 1-2 counts. It was just one after another. Yesterday, they were doing a better job of working ahead in counts, but then maybe just chasing pitches that they ended up getting themselves out on. So pitch selection is going to be the first key to success for Oklahoma State today. Poulard gets bat on ball there. It'll be put out of play. So 2-2 count now. Skirman one away from getting the first out of the day. And for Iowa State, something they've done very, very well is defense. Defense has been a big question mark for the Cyclones this season. This series, they have been lights out defensively. Poulard sends it over to Spellhog at first. She'll step on it herself to get out number one here in the inning. That will bring up Claire Tim. Tim, the sophomore from Buena Clark, California. 37 hits on the season, 319 batting average. Skirman will send the first pitch her way. And she'll foul that one off her own body for strike one. We talk about how big of a series this has been for Iowa State. They secured their highest ranked series win in program history yesterday. And it was their first series win over a ranked opponent since Baylor last season. So really, you know, we were talking about this beforehand, Allie, but kind of a totally different Iowa State team from last weekend to this one. It's been a night and day difference. Mm -hmm. Last weekend, we had a doubleheader on Saturday between the two games. We saw eight, nine errors. I don't remember the exact number. The first two games of this series, we had one error in the combined games. The, the defense has been absolutely lights out. They've been playing with a lot more energy. And at the plate, the three home runs have been the difference. That one shot over to first base. It is Andrews to Spellhog. So a 4-3 gets you out number two. Koa and Tiana Poole with Camille Marin behind the plate. And that will be out number three as Wong will fly out to right 0-0 zero, zero after the top of the first, followed by Allen, Ranchez, Poole, Spellhog, Miner, Andrews, Marin, and then lastly, Wardlow. First pitch to Ochoa will be low and outside for ball number one. Yesterday, it was the third pitch of the game yeah. that Malaysia Ochoa saw, and she drove it over the center field wall. She was the momentum starter yesterday, offensively and defensively. Yeah, he talked about the defensive play, the incredible dive out in center, full extension. Also had the double back in inning number six. Eventually would be brought in by Ranchez, but an incredible day. And, you know, we talked about it last weekend, a, a tough weekend against Kansas over that series. And you were not afraid at all about saying that Ochoa would bounce back, and she's done just that. Yeah, it was not her weekend, you could say, last weekend. And, and every single hitter has those weekends. Um, there's some folks in the Iowa State lineup having this weekend be that weekend yeah. for them, and some in the Oklahoma State lineup you could say the same thing about. But she has done her job. She put in the work this week at practice, and it showed. 2-1 pitch from Kilfoyle. Shoa misses that one. Strike number two. So Kilfoyle looking to get started in this first inning. She pitched really well in that first game, just Miner kind of took the top off later on as Ochoa will foul that one off. Stay alive here. Kilfoyle, a pitcher that does tend to work down in the zone, and you'll, you've noticed it here so far in all these pitches against Ochoa. She is staying low, she is staying outside so far. She's not scared to come inside, 
but she is a pitcher, as I mentioned, tends to work down in the zone, going to induce a lot of ground balls from Iowa State's offense. Kilfoyle, 2-2 pitch on its way. Ochoa skies that one out into center, just like she did yesterday, but not deep enough this time around as it will be caught by Tim. Tell you what, behind the dish is Wong, and obviously Kilfoyle in the circle for the Cowgirls. As it is now Angelina Allen at the dish for Iowa State. Allen, 449 batting average, 57 hits. She's had a hit in 11 straight games. Takes a hack there, misses it, 1-1 count. You'll see Kilfoyle there working a little more inside on Allen Ochoa. She stayed away from the plate. Allen, she's staying low, but coming to the inside corner of the plate. Watch that one for the second ball of the count. And something that Allen's done a really good job of is, you know, you talked about Oklahoma State kind of being behind in the count, or ahead of the count, I apologize. We've seen a lot of Iowa State batters behind, and, and Allen's been one that just finds a way to fight and get, get on base in any way. Yeah, these Iowa State hitters over the last few weeks, it's been interesting in our conversations with Coach Pinkerton. That's one thing they've really, really worked on as a team is better count management. And I feel like... It, it's really starting to show this weekend. And Allen, really a team leader in that of knowing her count, knowing when to take the big swing, and knowing when to shorten up. So now full count here for Angelina Allen. Looking to give the Cyclones the first base runner of the day. The delivery from Kilfoyle, and it'll be put in play. Hard bat over to first base, but an easy out as Godwin scoops it up and steps on first. Angelina Allen, no shortage of power on that ground ball. Godwin, a great job staying level, staying behind the ball in order to make the play. Now it is Alicia Ranchez, senior from Iwa Beach, Hawaii. 302 average, 32 hits, 22 RBIs. One of those was the second run of the day. Friar State back in the bottom of the sixth, which gave them the ability to play without pressure in the seventh. And that's huge. That's absolutely huge. And there, there's always pressure when you're playing against the number five team, but the insurance runs, they matter so, so much. 1-0 pitch from Kilfoyle. That'll be high. So 2-0 count now. Ranchez with a bit of a lead. Ranchez takes a hack. Kilfoyle gets her first strike of the at-bat. And once again, just really good outing here in Ames from the crowd, both sides. We've had a lot of, you know, the stands have been filled for the last three days. Weather has a huge part in that, but also just good softball. Yeah. <laughs> you could say is the even biggest contributing factor. Today, though, as well, just bark in the park. So quite a few dogs in the crowd as well. Absolutely, always a fun time. Two to count here for Kilfoyle and Ranchez. She'll send it to her. That'll be close, but just outside. So now a full count here. Oklahoma State trying to do the same that Iowa State did. Send the Cyclones up, send three up, three down. as Ranchez stays alive. Both Kilfoyle and Rosenberry for Oklahoma State throw with a lot of power. They're, they, they're pitchers that are able to throw it hard and really, really spin the ball. They kind of have best of both worlds when it comes to pitching with speed and movement. Over the course of the year, they've also done really well with control. Very few walks between the two pitchers. Once again, you can see the fight out of Ranchez. And really just, you know, impressive job by Iowa State's offense over the course of the weekend. Haven't gotten a ton of hits between both days, but they have increased the ERAs for both Kilfoyle and Rosenberry over the last two days. For Iowa State, it's been the timely hits, and that's just something Oklahoma State hasn't been able to come up with yet so far in this series. 
And there is a walk by Kilfoyle. So a great at bat there out of Ranchez to get herself on base. Battled off two and eventually awarded. It is now Tiana Poole for Iowa State with two down here in the bottom of the first. Tiana, 23 hits this season. Just a tad above 250 for her batting average. We're kind of joking around earlier. We used to seeing her have have a dance pregame and getting the team going. We didn't see that today. Yeah, not a lot of dancing the last yeah. two days. <laughs> you, usually Iowa State pregame, they're all out there dancing. Maybe they have found the dancing unlucky. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a new vibe. Right. Coach Pickerton said that his squad has, has always loved playing Oklahoma State regardless of where it's being played in Stillwater or in Ames. And it's certainly got to feel a little bit sweeter to get multiple victories on the weekend. One one pitch on its way to pool. And make it two one now. Kilfoyle here. Continuing to stay outside on pool. She's just off the plate on the left-handed batter's box line right now. Needs to dial it just a little back in closer. Pool likes what she sees there, but fouls it off. So once again, a 2-2 count. Ranchez was in the same spot, eventually found her way on base. Once again, Iowa State's batting lineup fighting at the plate. Really good job there by Tiana Poole. She's showing a, a slug formation. They're going to put her bat out front just a way for hitters to see the ball a little bit better out of the pitcher's hip. It's, a, it's an approach I took. A lot of powers will, power hitters will take it a little bit quicker through the zone. And that will close down the first inning. Swing and a miss out of Poole. And it is still a 0-0. Zero, zero. Into the series, you could have felt that, oh, we might have another one of those games. Iowa State has competed all yeah. weekend. Obviously, yesterday with the victory in game two, along with game one, first series victory over Oklahoma State since 2013. The Cyclones picked up their fourth and fifth victories against a top five team in program history over the last two days. And like we said, Iowa State just, they, they have fun against Oklahoma State. It's part of the game. It's, it's their way of staying involved in the game. And um, this Oklahoma State team, a lot of new faces. Most of these players have never played in Ames before. Nice job there out of Rosie Davis. Gets that one to bloop in to right field for the first hit of the day. Rosie Davis, the right-handed hitter, just going opposite field with it. This is exactly what Oklahoma State needs to do today. Shorten up those swings, drive the ball where the ball is pitched, get themselves on base. So nobody down but a base runner here early for Oklahoma State. Again, they've scored only two runs over the course of the series. Iowa State outscoring the Cowgirls 7-2. Hard hit there out of Godwin goes foul. Godwin, freshman out of North Carolina. 44 hits this season. You talked about a lot of new faces, and she's one of them, and she's made quite the impact her freshman season. Young talent on this roster. Great recovery there out of Andrews. They're going to take a timeout here to make sure Andrews is okay. She says she is. This is a hard hit ground ball off of Godwin's bat. And you can tell Andrews is thinking two right away. Perfect opportunity there for a double play. But in the end, just a great job recovering to get the out at first. So that gives Iowa State the first out of the inning. But now runner in scoring position is Davis for Lexi McDonald, who is now at the plate. Nine RBIs on the season for her. She'll watch the per first pitch go for a ball. This is kind of
kind of been this, the opposite, you know, of Iowa State is, is Oklahoma State has, has struggled with the timely hitting, as you mentioned, and this is certainly an opportunity to do that here and get themselves an early lead. Yeah, McDonald, the left-handed hitter, you'd love to see her drive a ball out into right field in this situation. Allow your runner to advance to third would be the strategic softball play here. McDonald ahead early, 2-0 the count. Skirman will deliver, and she'll get her first strike. Back. Attacking the inside of yeah. the zone, that looked like a very nice off-speed pitch. Over the corner, she doesn't get the call on that one though. Down three one in the count now. Yeah, I've, I feel like over the last few days here over this series, we've seen the Iowa State pitchers kind of get a, a little bit more frisky with with the zone. What a play by Ranchez! And she is able to get it. You said it best, Allie. Great effort there out of Ranchez. Throws out McDonald trying to get over to first. This ball, as it gets past Skirman, looks like it's going to be a single. Up the middle, Ranch is able to take just the right angle, set her feet, and make the throw across the diamond. So now two down. Davis has been advanced on the last two ground balls. She'll be over at third base for Michaela Wark at the dish for Oklahoma State, part of the All Big 12 freshman team a season ago. I know it's only the second inning here, but what a crucial at-bat for both sides here. For Oklahoma State, you have a runner in scoring position. You need to get her in, get an early lead in this game. And for Iowa State to keep the momentum of the weekend, get the third out. Skirman behind in the count once again, 2-0. She's been able to get her, get the batters with you know, a situation where she gives her, her defense a chance. Yeah, she's she's getting a little bit more behind counts today. As we mentioned on, on Friday, a ton of 0-2, one, two counts, but she's putting these hitters in situations we know they're gonna swing. So um, let the defense work, I guess. Work watches that one as she had the 3-0 count. Now make it 3-1. Again, two down over on third is Rosie Davis. Reached on a single that she dropped into right field to lead off this second inning. And now Wark sends one out to right. And just out of play as Poole was tracking it down. And now Skirman has fought her way back into this thing. Skirman eyeing down Wark. She'll deliver it. And it'll just be a touch high for ball four. So Oklahoma State stays alive in the inning. Skirman gets her 30th walk on the season. She's got herself at a three and three record over 54 innings. And we've, we've really seen a couple pitchers kind of grow up over the last two weekends for Iowa State. Haven't had time to uh, yeah. <laughs> get get some extra off-season work in after that freshman year. It's, hey, the time is now. Freshman year yeah. of Big 12 play, let's go. Um, Coach Kenny Gajewski here sending signs over to both his runners. We have a first and third situation, two outs. And the next two hitters up, we have Graf and Bloodworth coming up for Oklahoma State. Not the best numbers on the season, but able to put the ball in play. Marin will shoot it down over to third, keeping an eye on Davis. And Skirman right now, you are facing possibly, I would say, the weakest part of this, this Oklahoma State order. You need to attack bats. Let them put it in play. Let your defense work. 2-0 pitch on its way from Skirman. And now back-to-back -back batters have a 3-0 lead over Lauren Skirman. 
after being down 3-0 in the count against Wark. She'll look to do the same here, first pitch. And she'll get the strike. And Bloodworth on deck does have three home runs on the season. Is, is a potential to hit with some power for this Oklahoma State lineup, so you don't want her coming up with the bases loaded. Yeah, she's certainly an uh, a, a extra base hitters. Seven singles within two doubles, two triples, and three home runs, as you mentioned, as she now gets up to bat with the bases juiced and two down here in the top of the second inning. Big spot here early for the junior. Just a 173 batting average. And first pitch to her will be a ball. Iowa State coaching staff having some conversations in the dugout there. Skirman just really struggling to find her zone right now. Typically, you don't want to make a pitching change mid at bat, but Skirman needs to dial it in. Once again, another ball out of Skirman. That one is high. She's had trouble staying ahead in the counts here through this second inning. Davis reached on a single and then back-to-back -back walks from Wark and Graff. Those are the runners on second and third. As watching that one will be Bloodworth. And looks like we do have a pitcher going out to the Iowa State bullpen. I believe it is Aziza Rodriguez. Skirman sends it home. And now 3-1 count. So she'll have to make Bloodworth put in play on this pitch or find a way to get two strikes back to back. As a pitcher here, just find the zone. Let your defense work. This Iowa State defense has been lights out this weekend. And that one in a perfect spot for Skirman, which leads us to the biggest pitch of the game to this point. Full count, two down, bases juiced for Bloodworth. These Oklahoma State runners are going to be moving. The delivery from Skirman. Bloodworth gets a hold of it, sent out into right center and just over the glove of Tiana Poole. And it will be a three RBI triple from Megan Bloodworth. Bloodworth, as you mentioned, going into this at bat, she hits the extra base hits. That is exactly yeah. what she did. She cleared the bases for Oklahoma State, exactly what they need early in this game going opposite field. And I really thought that ball had enough to get it over the fence. Yeah. But needless to say, a triple after back-to-back -back walks. And the free bases come back to Han Iowa State. Bloodworth makes the Cyclones pay. And now just one runner on for the top of the lineup and Poulard. But Oklahoma State already here today has scored more runs than they have all of this weekend. And Poulard here. I would say this weekend has been the most dangerous bat for Oklahoma State. She was the one with the big hit yesterday. She'll send that one over to Spellhog. A bit of a deja vu. She did the same in the first. So that will end the top of the second. Here in the bottom of the second inning, Oklahoma State has not dealt with a lead for much of this series. When they went up 2-1 in the top of the fifth inning yesterday, that was their first lead of the day. That obviously did not last a very long time as Iowa State would tie it up in the sixth and eventually win it in the seventh. So a little bit of a comfortable spot here for Kilfoyle to have some insurance. As first hit of the day for Iowa State, Spellhog will get herself a stand-up double. Carly Spellhog, the fifth-year senior for Iowa State. You'll see here the right-handed hitter gets that ball right out front over Bloodworth at shortstop. For Iowa State scoring three runs, it's a tall task against Lexi Kilfoyle. She does not give up runs coming into this game, a .92 ERA on the season. So it is very, very rare for her to give up many runs at all. 
And Miner, just like she's had a lot this week, that is now the fifth time she has been hit, dating back all the way to DePaul here on Tuesday. And I have actually never seen this, but today she was wearing a knee pad. That's how you know you get hit a lot, when you come into the box with a knee pad on. Yeah, I, I have never seen that in <laughs> softball. That's awesome. She had a bit of a smirk as she jogged her way down to first base. And those definitely do not feel good. And there's going to be a lot of bruises for Ashley Miner after this weekend. So it is now McKenna Andrews. Iowa State has had their t first two hitters get on base, Spellhog and Miner. As you see Andrews at the dish. Sophomore from Flower Mound, Texas. 11 hits for her. Looking to lay down the bunt. And now Wong going to test Spellhog. It was McKenna Andrews yesterday in the seventh inning who put down a sacrifice bunt in the same situation before, before Camille Marin on deck hit the walk-off. Yep. So I know we're only in the second inning. Completely different <laughs> situation, but very good at moving runners over. She'll put that one straight down the middle. Potential double play. And they will get it. Or actually, believe Andrews is going to be safe. Godwin dropped the ball there over at first base. Great play, though, by second baseman Davis going up the middle. That looked like it could have been a single through the gap. But Davis able to touch the base and make the throw over. As I mentioned, it was Godwin at first base. Caught her on the heel of the glove and fell right down by her foot. So first out of the inning as Miner goes down at second, but runners on the corner for Iowa State and Camille Marin first pitch she sees. It's in play and she'll get herself another RBI. Back to back fielder's choices here. Keep getting the runner at second base. Yeah. <laughs> Knock him off there. But Camille Marin able to put the ball in play exactly what Iowa State needed to get the run. So Iowa State gets their first run on the day. 3-1 score here now. Two down for the nine spot, Olivia Wardlow. And Iowa State able to bounce back. Oklahoma State got put up three in the top of the second. Iowa State able to come back with one now in the bottom of the second. That's critical for when you're chipping away at a lead by your opponent. Ward low ahead here early, 2-0. We'll see if she can get on base for the top of the lineup with Ochoa. And now way ahead, 3-0. Wardlow knows how to get on, 350 on base percentage. And that one will be a four pitch walk from Kilfoyle. And that's something we really do not see a lot out of the graduate student. She is tied for ninth in the least amount of walks allowed in the Big 12. 20 coming into today and now two through today's contest. Alexi Kilfoyle coming into the weekend didn't have a single game all season with three walks. Her first one was on Friday, and so far today, just through two innings, she's had two. So two down but two on for Malaysia Ochoa. She flew out to center field back in inning number one. Tried to call her shot <laughs> on back-to-back -back days, but left that one a little bit short. This is a dangerous hitter right now for Kilfoyle to be facing. You can't pitch around Ochoa, though, with Allen on deck. No. So for Iowa State, the heart of the lineup right now. Great opportunity for the Cyclones after giving up three in the top portion of this inning. One of them was a home run from Ashley Miner. The other one, she plunked Ashley Miner. So don't know if those two got something going on. <laughs> she did to her again. I think that's just the story of <laughs> Ashley Miner's season right? so far. 11 hit by pitches for her. Ochoa takes a hack there as Kilfoyle get her first strike of the at-bat. And Kilfoyle there going low and outside, staying on that corner. And 
getting the call there is Kilfoyle. Great, great pitch. Great bounce back after that conversation with Coach Everly of let's have a strategy, let's execute it, let's go after her. Kilfoyle trying to get out of a jam here. Ochoa fights, keeps the count at two balls and two strikes. Again, Angelina Allen awaits on deck. Should Ochoa reach? And once again, Ochoa, a repeat foul ball. We've seen Iowa State do that a ton today. And since that timeout, all four pitches have been low and away. So, I mean, now she's seen it four pitches in a row. It's exactly what she's expecting. Will be interesting to see if Kilfoyle decides it, mix it up just a little bit on the fifth pitch since that timeout. Another 2-2 two -two pitch. And <laughs> Ochoa, three in a row. And she's even smiling down there too. Again, Camille Marin over at second. Olivia Wardlow at first. And if you're Kilfoyle right here, you have a ball to give. I mean, you hate getting in a 3-2 count, but you have a ball to give. Throw something off the plate, something to try and get her to chase. <laughs> Just a broken <laughs> record at and this point. <laughs> it was off the plate, and she yeah. did chase, but she still hit it. So that is now four consecutive foul balls from Malaysia Ochoa. Cat and mouse game between Kilfoyle and the senior from Chino, California. You have to wonder some sort of off speed here. Try and mix it up somehow. She goes <laughs> inside. That one put into the stands. Where you guessed it, another foul ball. This is obviously a huge get for Oklahoma State to make sure they get out of this, in this inning only surrendering one. Ochoa, that one, foul. It's almost like you've said that before. <laughs> Maybe like six times in a row, I'm not sure. <laughs> so a long at bat here. It's been at 2-2 for a very long time. No, Choa, just an outstanding job. The ability to get your bat on the ball, regardless of where this pitch is coming. I mean, it's impressive. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and kind of a sarcastic applause by the crowd <laughs> after yet another foul ball. We're seeing one heck of a battle here between Couple preseason all Big 12 members. And finally a change in pace. This one is a ball. And great job by Ochoa. As I was saying, you have a ball to get, give. Try yeah. and get her to chase. That's exactly what she did. First time going up in the zone in this at bat. Ochoa lays off of it. Full count pitch. And that one roped out into right field and that one just out of play. That was a new foul ball. That was a foul <laughs> ball to the to the right side instead yes. of the left side. <laughs> she she M Malaysia wants some variety for all yeah. of us. Yeah. Got to mix up the foul balls. Right. Keep everyone on their toes. All right, something's happening. This pitch, <laughs> not a foul ball. <laughs> and it's going to be put in play over to second. And finally, an end to Kilfoyle versus Ochoa. It will close down the inning. Iowa State gets it's their win-loss record. They are a very, very solid team. And the fact that they have 16 underclassmen, freshmen and sophomores, that are doing it for them, a lot of talent that should be there for the years to come. Yeah. Getting this third inning started is going to be Claire Tim. Back in inning number one, grounded out to Andrews over at second base. And again, Coach Pinkerton and company decide to keep Lauren Skirman in the ball game. And Skirman, the end of that last inning, pitches were kind of getting away from her. She's working behind in count, starting out this inning with a 2-0 count. There she goes right on the inside corner of the plate for the strike. So 
So we'll see if Skirman is able to battle her way back into this thing. We'll keep an eye on the Iowa State bullpen. Earlier we saw Rodriguez out there, and now it looks like Carly Charles is warming up. And once again, over to second base. This time it's off the glove of Andrews. So Tim will reach on first. And Tim, they're a very hard hit ball, as was her hit in the first inning. That one, though, defensively, you'd like to see McKenna Andrews maybe take one more step up the middle, try to stay on her feet there to make the play. And so now Coach Pinkerton having a quick discussion. It does look like Cyclones. Yeah, Wong coming into the weekend just had been playing lights out. Mm -hmm. And we, we talk about the weekend Malaysia Ochoa had last weekend, just kind of been that weekend for Caroline Wong. Yeah, and Wong is the reigning national and Big 12 player of the week. She had quite a mind-blowing performance in the series against Houston. She went 7 for 9, a 7-7 seven, seven, eight batting average, two doubles, four home runs, and 10 RBIs. Tough play for Spellhog at first, so Wong will get on, but Iowa State gets the out over at second. Carly Spellhog almost able to turn this into an amazing double play for Iowa State. You'll see their ranches throw just sails high, and the correct call there to Car for Caroline Wong to reach base. So first out for Iowa State, it will bring up Rosie Davis coming off a single in the second. She would be one of the three runs to score after Bloodworth smacked a triple out into right field. Davis has also had a pretty good weekend, was the star for Oklahoma State in game one, two for three, a couple of singles. And so now Charles doing a good job of, of staying in the count. One one pitch from Charles. Davis smacks it over to Ranchez, gonna go for the double play. Cannot shoot it over to first in time, but Ranchez gets out number two. Ranchez twice now is trying to get Wong <laughs> at first base, just cannot seem to get her. But a great play over there to get Davis off the hard hit. So nice job by the Iowa State defense here in the top of the third, two down, Wong over at first. Carly Godwin now up. She grounded out to Andrews over at second, back in inning number two. And now she'll send that one back to Andrews once again, and what a grab. McKenna Andrews flashing the leather. to Start off the third. You and me kind of joked up here um, after the second inning concluded that you would have wished a little bit more of an exciting end to Ochoa versus Kilfoyle. Yeah, for Oklahoma State fans, you would have loved to see a big strikeout for Iowa State fans. You would have loved to have seen a big double or home run. Yeah, getting a look there at what Angelina Allen has done this weekend, one of the top hitters in the Big 12 Conference. So far this season, you'd have to say a no doubt first team selection oh, for all Big 12 Conference. Just what she's done at the plate, she's just such a consistent factor. She gets on base for Iowa State regardless of the situation. She's down big here, 0-2 against Kilfoyle. And that one just a little bit too far outside for the first ball. Situation we've seen a lot today. Iowa State having to battle their way back into counts. Allen no different here. And once again, another close pitch. And Kilfoyle here definitely working more inside Ochoa. Allen both lefties. Ochoa, Kilfoyle stays off the plate outside. And against Allen, she's staying off the plate inside. 2-2 Two -two pitch from Kilfoyle. Allen gets a hold of that one. But it will be fouled off. So maybe the start of yet another 2-2 classic here. <laughs> Kilfoyles are saying, how many pitches do <laughs> I have to throw you guys to get right. you out? The lefties are making it hard on Kilfoil. And now a little bit quicker of a transition from 2-2 to 3-2 this time around. 
as Allen trying to give Iowa State a base runner here in the third as they trail by two. Again, the Cyclones got wins in game one and game two, have already clinched the series, but are looking for the sweep. And now Allen is walked, and again, kind of uncharacteristic to see three walks here through just two innings for Kilfoyle. For Kilfoyle, though, I don't hate it in that situation. I mean, you never want to start off an inning with a leadoff walk, but I don't hate it. The damage that Angelina Allen's bat can do, it's not the end of the world to have her on first base. Yeah. That will bring up Alicia Ranchez. She was one of the walks as well back in the first. She was put on with two down. And it looks like we have a little bit of technology <coughs> issue there. So pitchers are wearing the watches there. Kilfoyle looked down at her watch a couple times. Either didn't like the pitch call or the pitch call wasn't coming through. So now she's got what she likes. She'll send it to Ranchez. A fast one, but low. And now we'll have a quick stoppage of play. Wong will head on over to the circle to have a quick chat with Killfoyle. And those two have, have been a great tandem along with Rosenberry mixing with Wong. And you have to imagine, you, you have a girl like Wong come into this program, a stud at Liberty, and then she just accelerated her game even more here at Oklahoma State. She's gotten the national spotlight here at Oklahoma State, and she has handled it well just has such a presence behind the plate and at the plate. A huge pickup in the transfer portal for Coach Kenny Gajewski. And they kind of hit, hit gold between her and Poulard. Both of those transfers. Wong from Liberty, Poulard from McNeese, and a, a good play here on the first baseline in the stands. Had, had a bit of a bobble, but you know, you got the he catch. Recovered. He yeah. got the catch. There was no error, it was an out. So one, one count here for Ranchez. Sends it over to Poulard at third, goes foul. We've seen a lot today of Iowa State showing bunt and pulling back. What's the strategy behind that? So several different things you can call it in softball. A slug, a lot of hitters will just do that with two strikes. It's their way of shortening up. As I mentioned earlier, it allows the hitter to fully turn their head at the pitcher, a way to get quicker through the zone. You stay more compact. Your hips don't reel quite as far. Your hands don't reel quite as far back. You stay a little bit more tight in your swing when you're doing that. 2-2 Two -two count here for Ranchez. Again, nobody down here in the bottom of the third. And guess what? We have another foul ball on the 2-2 count. <laughs> Someone needs to start counting how many 2-2 count <laughs> foul balls we've had this game. Yes, the counter would be massive. And Kilfoyle once again in this situation needs to go back to an attack pitch here, get the hitters to chase. Ranchez sticks her bat out there. And Kilfoyle there, I mean, really, you can't ask for a better pitch. She went off speed. She went outside. Ranch is able to slow it down just a little bit, stick her bat out there, and foul it off. Kilfoyle at 62 pitches here today through two innings. And another foul ball here. That one rocketed over to the Oklahoma State crowd that one over there. You see the group in the orange shirts all here cheering on Lexi Kilfoyle. They almost got a souvenir on that foul <laughs> ball. It was fun watching them and the Iowa State crowd go back and forth yesterday during one of our many reviews. Ranchez, it's gonna be a tough play for Oklahoma State. It's going to drop. And Allen did not get there in time, held up in case it was going to be caught. And so Iowa State unable to have two on. And looks like potentially Coach Pinkerton calling for the, um, to have a look at this. And Allen here just not getting far enough off. You'd like to see her just a little bit more of a lead. And not really sure what there would be to review here. And they are going to review date this season. Yeah. We even saw BYU take care of Oklahoma in game one of their series, and it is official. Angelina Allen out at second. 
So one down, Ranchez over at first. And now Tiana Poole up to bat for Iowa State. Struck out back in the first inning with two down. First pitch of the at-bat sent over by Kilfoyle. And Poole let that go. And I know we don't got a 2-2 count right now, but what does that do for a pitcher to just have so many where you're like, I'm, I'm throwing good pitches. You know, you said that, right? Yeah, it, it's frustrating. I mean, it's frustrating when the hitters just continue to get the bat on the ball. You just start to kind of ask yourself, what else can I be doing differently? Bloodworth trying to turn two. They cannot. So Ranchez out at second. Not having a runner on second base, there is a complete momentum change there. Because unfortunately, in that situation, we could be first and third with right. one out. And Spellhawk, who drilled one last her in her last at bat, but instead were two outs and only a runner on first base. Big momentum shift in this game. Spellhawk puts that one about in the same place as Ranchez, but able to get over to that is McDonald in right field. Still 3-1 after three in favor. With Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, once that got started, just an awesome opportunity to spotlight so many sports. It's hard to miss a game now. Right. <laughs> so Charles gets ahead here on her first batter in the fourth. It is McDonald. She grounded out to Ranchez, who made a really incredible play back in the second. And now sends one just to her again, but that one over her fingertips. Ochoa scoops it up out in left center, but it is a base hit for McDonald. McDonald today swinging a very good bat. Her, as you mentioned, her ground ball in the first was a hard hit ball, and that one just out of reach. She will be ran for here, but she's having a good day. So it will be Michaela Wark now up to bat for Oklahoma State. And your pinch runner for Oklahoma State is number five, Taylor Anderson, the freshman from Dripping Springs, Texas. Actually, is number nine. Take that back. It is Tia Warsop. Senior gets some action both in the field at the dish as a runner, kind of doing it all this weekend for Oklahoma State. And Coach Kenny Gajewski sending in some signs to his runner and hitter here. Definitely an opportunity for Oklahoma State with no outs, runners on base. Swing and a miss there out of Wark. Marin keeping her eyes over on Warsop at first base. Once again, kind of the, the difference for Iowa State since Charles has stepped in is she has not fallen behind in a lot of counts. And she typically won't. She's a, she's a pitcher. She stays right around the zone. And it, it's something that you, you hate to say it, but sometimes it's a little bit to her downfall, how much she throws strikes. Yeah. She's right around the zone. She's just so consistent. That's a foul ball. That one very close by Wark. Probably had the opportunity to score Warsop there with her speed. So a sigh of relief for Iowa State and Coach Pinkerton. One, two count still for Wark. Redshirt sophomore, 26 hits here in this 2024 campaign. And now she'll foul that one backwards. Charles making her fight. Another one two pitch out of Charles. And another foul down the third base line out of Wark. And Wark in the seven spot today. A little bit of an, an adjustment to the batting order by coach Kenny Gajewski. 
trying to get the bats going, and that has weirdly been the struggle for Oklahoma State over the course of the weekend. Just producing runs, stringing hits. To get, they've gotten quite a few hits. There's no doubt about that. They've hit several singles throughout the weekend, but we go back to Friday, they hit five singles across four innings, so mm -hmm. unable to string those, those hits together to produce runs. Yeah, and this is certainly an extra base hit team. 10 triples, 62 home runs, 57 doubles. The triples and homers are second in the Big 12 each. And they've only had one extra base hit over the course of the weekend, and it was Poulard who had the go-ahead double in the fifth yesterday. And the RBI triple today. Oh, yeah, yeah you're right, you're yeah, right. Yep. The, the big hit today so far. But for And it's been the multi-base hits who have been the big hits. Yeah. The RBI have come from the double and the triple. That one skied high into the infield. Miner can't grab it, but there is going to be a play over at second. So nonetheless, Iowa State will get an out. It'll just be a different base runner instead. And actually, that worked out. Surprisingly, <laughs> that worked out to Iowa State's favor. Yeah, because you get the fast one Yeah, off. yeah. So you you have your fast pinch runner who, to no fault of her own, yeah, absolutely no fault to her own, is now out at second base. And instead of having her at first, you now have work at first. Yes. So it unavoidable. <laughs> yes. And so now one down, Graf up to bat. She was a part of the back-to-back -back walks. Work was first, and those two walks in the second is, is eventually what killed Iowa State. And now 0-2 count. Charles doing a great job today here in relief. We've seen Jaden Ralston be the reliever for Iowa State over the course of the weekend, but a, a change of pace here in game three. One, two on its way from Charles. And now make it two, two. So after two consecutive strikes, you've got two consecutive balls. As you mentioned before, this is the part of the lineup that has done damage for Oklahoma State, looking to do it a second time around. Ranchez will get it over to Andrews at second. So Ranchez elects to make the play at second. It pays off. And now the Cowgirls will not have a runner in scoring position with two down. That right there, you talk about the difference in runners on that high fly ball, the the at bat before. That's your difference right there. Yeah. Ranchez, who is moving more towards the five six hole, able to throw it back to Andrews to get the lead runner instead of the runner at first. Yeah, and just like she has been all season, Ranchez has made some phenomenal plays at short today. So two down for Oklahoma State. It is the girl who has done all the damage for the Pokes, Megan Bloodworth, the three RBI triple that she sent over the glove of Tiana Poole in right field with two down in the second inning. That's how Oklahoma State has scored all of their runs. Obviously she is facing a different pitcher this time around. Saw Charles, or sorry, saw Skirman in the second, now facing Charles. One, one delivery, and that one will be sent high and eventually finds its way into the stands. It's a nice souvenir there for a young fan. Always cool when you can come away with one of those. Yeah, it's the best part of going to the ball game. <laughs> <laughs> Bloodworth gets it in the air. Andrews calls off Spellhog and drops it. In this Iowa State defense who has been so reliable so far this weekend. That one put out into the left center gap. And Angelina Allen is able to snatch it. So Iowa State avoids 
giving up any more runs after the Emil Marin drove in Spellhog back in the second. And now we start with Ashley Miner and <laughs> Allie, you joked about it. Is she going to get hit again? <laughs> Let's see if she's got her knee pad. Oh, that was close. <laughs> She does got the, she got it on. I tell you what though, it, it goes to show how close she does stand to the plate, which some hitters are that way. She's got her knee pad, she's got her shin pad, she's got her elbow guard. And on that pitch, it ended up being called a strike. And it looked pretty far inside, but. And this one will not be a hit by pitch as Poulard snatches that one over at third for out number one. Now one down, McKenna Andrews will come on up. She was the first of two consecutive fielder's choice for Iowa State. She would reach and then get put out at second. Lays down the bunt, just goes foul. And you talked about it earlier, but she certainly has had success with that this season and specifically yesterday. She's not a hitter that's going to hit with a ton of power, but she does have speed. She is smart at reading the defenses. So for her, she knows it's a matter of how can I get myself on base? How can I move my runners? Obviously, no runners on right now, but what can I do that's going to get myself on base? Eleven or Nine of her 11 hits have been singles on the season, the other two doubles. Now she'll have to fight 0-2. Kilfoyle making quick work here early in the fourth. And now she'll send down Andrews, getting her second strikeout of the day. And McKenna Andrews there just gets caught chasing that low pitch by Kilfoyle. Kilfoyle is dangerous when she's able to throw that drop ball in the bottom of the zone. That's exactly what she's doing. You've talked about it a lot. She loves to play down, and she's certainly done that today. For a pitcher, you just got to stick with what what you're good at, you know. Yeah. And it, it sounds cliche, it sounds funny to say, but when you're seeing a ton of foul balls and your team hasn't had close play there, um, when your team hasn't had the success that you would like this weekend, you just got to go back to your mechanics, trust what you're good at, and keep doing it. Tim nearly able to dive and snatch it out in foul, foul territory in right field, just out of her reach though. So Marin. Will still be at the dish, 0-1 count. We talked about it earlier. The hero yesterday, first home run of, of on the season, and man, was it a good one. She'll watch that pitch for a ball, 1-1 count here for Camille. Kilfoyle there, un, unfazed by these Iowa State hitters. She's not scared to go to that inside corner. Works right at their knees and working ahead this inning. She's really settled into this game. One, two count, two down. Kilfoyle trying to send the Cyclones three up and three down. And that will be the case as Marin shoots one over to second. Oklahoma State will keep their 3-1 lead heading into the fifth inning. And so that's the trade-off you take and now Pinkerton uh, elects to put in Knowles to make sure this defense is even more rock solid. It'll be interesting too. So obviously Marin was the last out for Iowa State. So when that spot comes around again, will we see Marin at the plate or will we see Knowles at the plate? So later in the game, you would have to think if it is a close situation, you'll see a Marin plate appearance in that situation. So it is Claire Tim to start the fifth inning, coming off a single in the third. O2 pitch from Charles. And now Tim shoots that one into the right center gap, and it is out of here. Solo blast from Claire Tim. Claire Tim. Her fifth home run of the season, and that was a no-doubter. A line drive off the bat. I would say it didn't get more than 12 feet in the air. An absolute blast to make this game 4-1. to one. Oklahoma State finally gets themselves one of their coveted home runs this weekend. Like you said, no-doubter. 
the fourth home run over this weekend. The first three were by Iowa State. Now Oklahoma State can get in on the fun. 63 as a team on the year. That is second best in the Big 12. And it stays with the trend. All of Oklahoma State's runs this week and have Kim off of extra base hits. So for Oklahoma State to be successful, they need some more big bats coming to end this game. Oklahoma State did not see any in the first game. They had the double from Pular that scored two yesterday, and then you saw the three RBI triple from Bloodworth back in inning number two, and then the solo shot there out of Tim. Charles ahead once again. Obviously, she was up on Tim, but she was able to capitalize. Charles looking to retire Wong, and that one is roped into the outfield. Back-to-back -back hits by the Cowgirls. And for Oklahoma State, that's exactly the bat they want to see come yes. alive. After last weekend, just a rough start to the weekend so far for Caroline Wong. Now close to the end of the game on Sunday, finally really seeing some solid contact out of her. That is a very, very positive note for Oklahoma State. And a pinch runner now. It will be number 21, Halden Sokolowski. So nobody out here in the top of the fifth. Oklahoma State has already scored one, trying to do even more damage as Davis cannot get the bunt to go down. And Davis, a hitter for Oklahoma State that does hit with some power. It was ready to show off some speed there with the bunt. Nice job by Knowles to snatch that one. And something that just kind of take an eye here at the scorecard. Finally starting to see the top of the order get going. A lot of it today has been the bottom half for Oklahoma State. Swing and a miss there out of Davis. Carly Charles works up in the zone on these Oklahoma State hitters. Going with a rise ball there, getting Davis to chase. And once again ahead on the Oklahoma State hitter. Charles looking for her first out of the inning. And she will do just that. Going down looking is Davis. Carly Charles mixing it up, working a little bit lower in the zone there. Davis completely thrown off. Yeah, that pitch was money. <laughs> Can't ask for anything better than that if you're Charles. So one down now here in the top of the fifth. As first pitch taken by Godwin, 0 for 2 today. She's been put out by Andrews twice. A strike delivered by Charles. So she's done a good job after giving up the home run. Like I said, she's just so even keeled when she's in the circle for Iowa State. She's going to continue to do her thing regardless of the situation. Really the steady force in this pitching staff. Yeah, and obviously with the injury to Saya Swain, the only upperclassman that's probably going to be seeing playing time over the rest of the season. The other girls that we see a lot, Jane Ralston, Aziza Rodriguez, and Lauren Skirman, who got the start. That's one sophomore and two freshmen. The underclassmen, like we talked about earlier, though. Just the, hey, you might be a freshman, <laughs> but uh, you're jumping in, you're, you're going to see some Big 12 innings. Yeah, and Coach Pinkerton had even That mentioned. ball is way gone. And that is the best home run that we've seen over the course of this weekend, Oklahoma State. 
is starting to separate. There's some balls that are hit, and you just you just know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to say yes. that was one of them. That this wind's blowing from left field to right field. That ball was absolutely crushed into left field. Wow, look at the replay on this. Fully extended. She knew it. An absolute no doubter there out of Godwin. Home run number nine for the freshman. So Oklahoma State has now scored three once again here in the fifth. Took a couple innings off on the on the score chart, but now they're back into it. 6-1 advantage for the Cowgirls. Obviously, a sour taste in Oklahoma State's mouth leaving here with the two losses on Friday and Saturday. But if they can come out of here today with a big victory, their bats are fired up, you got to feel just a little bit better about yes. the weekend going into next week. And different hitter here for Oklahoma State in the sixth spot. It is Tia Warsop. 333 batting average. Nine hits on 27 plate appearances for the freshman out of England. Two-0 from Charles. And now make it 3-0. Warsop has been trying to lay down a bunt. She's been showing bunt. Iowa State defense is playing in. They know it's coming. And there will be strike number one. Kayla Wark waits on deck. Just one down here in the top of the fifth inning. Oklahoma State has already scored three in the fifth as Charles now makes it a full count. Charles' ability there to just work it back even is so critical for Iowa State putting themselves in a situation to possibly get an out. She slaps it down. Miner's going to be a tough play. And Warsop gets herself a base hit. Warsop there just too fast. Yes. There was no way with how soft she hit that, absolutely perfectly placed. There was no way Miner was getting that out. Another look at the speed on display. She's flying. <laughs> yeah, there's, <laughs> there's no way you're getting that out. <laughs> that was perfectly placed by Warsop. Before Spellhawk had even jumped to get the ball, Warsop had gotten on first base. So now another base runner here for the Cowgirls with just one away. Michaela Wark looking to get her first base hit. She's been on twice today, one walk, and then also reached on a fielder's choice. And now lined over to Miner, and a double play. You're heading into the bottom of the fifth, as it will be the nine spot, Olivia Wardlow. And this is a, an interesting formation we're seeing out of the Oklahoma State defense. So they actually bring in an extra infielder. So you're going to see five infielders. They're playing with no right fielder right now. Wardlow, a slapper, tends to hit to the left side. They're going to throw outside on her to make sure that happens. She finds herself down 0-2 and the count has reached via a walk back in inning number two. But really outside of a potential danger spot in the second inning, Kilfoyle has locked this thing down today. And Kilfoyle playing today, really Oklahoma State, and you see the strike out there, but Oklahoma State today playing the way we expected them to play right. all weekend. The extra base hits, Kilfoyle shutting it down in the circle, and Iowa State I mean, hats off to Iowa State for preventing that yep. for two entire games. So one down for the top of the order, and Malaysia Ochoa has not reached here in game three. 0 for 2, a fly out to center and a ground out to second. And that last plate appearance took off a couple of years of everyone's lives.
That was a little dramatic. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I was pushing about 10 pitches and <laughs> quite a few foul balls. It was a balls. very long at bat. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 1-1 one, one count this time around. I'm sure if, if it gets to 2-2, two, two, the two of them are going to kind of look at each other and be like, can we, we not do this again? Are we doing this yep. again? And Kilfoyle continuing to work outside on Ochoa. The question is, are we a strike away from repeating what happened back in the second? 2-1 here for Kilfoyle. Sends it Ochoa's way. Great off speed there by Kilfoyle. And good job on Ochoa's part there, laying off that pitch. You know you're not going to hit the pitch with power. Watch it go by. You have... Maybe 10 more pitches coming. See what you want. And Kilfoyle going right back to that pitch. Maybe just one ball further away off the plate. So Ochoa, one pitch away from getting on base for the first time today. Does that a lot. 455 on base percentage for the senior. Here's the full count pitch. Ochoa stays alive. Kilfoyle got her to chase after that one. That one put out, and a lot of girls going after that. Poulard and Graf, the closest to it. Neither one of them could get there in time. It's always a dangerous spot to put those foul balls. It's kind of like the Bermuda Triangle. Very, right. very far distance for each position to have to run. Would have been an amazing play. So we'll see our third full count pitch now. And another foul ball here out of Ochoa. And one down here in the fifth, Iowa State trying to find a way to answer after the Cowgirls put up three in the top half of the inning. And this one put into the stands once again. Ochoa swings on that one, put out into center, and able to get under that is Tim. And that's the second time today Ochoa has really squared up a ball to center field, going just to the warning track with it. But I tell you what, all the foul balls we've seen off her bat, I know we joke about it, but she is seeing the ball very, very well. Yeah. The amount that Lexi Kilfoyle is able to move the ball to be able to get your bat to it, and then after long at bats, square it up like that, very impressive hitting, but also very impressive pitching on Kilfoyle's end. Now two down, it's Angelina Allen. First pitch she'll swing at. She's got on once with a walk back in the third. And that's probably an inning that Iowa State's going to look back on. Had Allen been able to get on second, you know, you kind of go back to every play that happened, and Spellhogs hit out into right is probably a sacrifice fly. You're exactly right. I mean, that at the time could have been a 3-2 ball game. You look at the what-ifs in the softball game, and we knew at some point Oklahoma State was going to, their bats were going to come alive. We didn't know if it was going to be yesterday. We didn't know if it was going to be today. And now late in this game, they are starting to rack up the runs. So who knows if it would have been a difference maker, but could have been. Close play at first, but Oklahoma State will get the Cyclones to go three up. Three Oklahoma State picked up that milestone in the midweek victory over Tulsa, three to two. So again, did have a couple defensive changes for Iowa State. First of note is Ralston, you see right here, 18 appearances, three and five record, four to three ERA. She's also struck out 43 to 60 hits. 
The other change is at second base, Isabel Nosen in for Andrews. And Ralston so far this weekend has shut down the Oklahoma State lineup. This is our third appearance of the weekend. I would say though, I think Oklahoma State swinging some different bats right now. They, yes. They've gotten they've gotten hot with the bats over the last two innings here. So Ralston, a completely different challenge than what she's faced over the last couple of games. It is Macy Graff here in the top of the six, two two count. And again, Iowa State had a tough weekend last week, but Ralston was kind of one of the lone bright spots over the course of the two games that she threw. It was 10 and a third innings pitch. She allowed four runs on eight hits, walked four and struck out eight. And as you mentioned, has done really good and relief over the course of this weekend. Facing a part of the lineup that you want to attack Bloodworth on deck, the three RBI triple. But Graf, you want to go right after right now. Check swing, Ralston gets it to, not going to get it to Spellhog in time. And Carly turned around, was a bit confused, not agreeing with the call there. And Coach Pinkerton's going to come out and have a conversation with the first base umpire, Jonathan Hand, on that one. I will say, it, it looked weird. Yeah, you just say, yeah. Spellhog definitely got jammed on the throw. But an explanation here from Jonathan Hand to Coach Pinkerton. It definitely looked like the ball beat her there. I mean, yeah, so here's out. another view. So, so I see what umpire Jonathan Hand is saying there. He's saying that Spellhawk did not have clean possession of the ball in her glove. The ball was still moving in her glove. So I... In that angle of the review, we see what he was looking at there. Yeah. And, and they look in a circle. Maddie Knowles, Jaden Ralston, Carly Spellhog all having a conversation about the play. <laughs> and usually they come out from a review and make their call, but they're actually going to bring in both coaches here and have a conversation. Coach Pinkerton goes out to join and she is safe at first, being Graf. Again, tough play and probably, you know, as you said, one of those situations where there's not an, enough evidence to overturn. Right, and after they showed the replay, I do see exactly what the umpires were seeing there live. At the end of the day, they're the closest ones and um, we're just seeing it live from, from a press box. So it's, it's a good thing you have review in those situations. Right. Make sure you get the call right. So nobody down here in the top of the sixth inning. Megan Bloodworth, the nine hole for Oklahoma State. Obviously had the hit that got everything started for the Cowgirls. Now lays down the bunt. No sin covers over at first, but they're able to advance Graf over to second. So now, Poulard has a runner in scoring position. And just one down for the top of the order. Poulard has yet to get on today. A couple ground outs to Spellhog at first. Flew out to Allen back in the fourth to close down that inning. And the top of this lineup just so, so dangerous, Poulard. The big double yesterday. You have Tim on deck with the home run earlier this game. You have Wong, obviously a dangerous bat. So crucial part of the batting lineup for Oklahoma State here in the sixth. 2-0 count here early. Again, Ralston, as you mentioned, has seen a lot of these hitters, but they have not performed the same way over the last two times that she's seen them uh, than, than uh, they have today. Sometimes all you need is a spark plug. You just need one thing to happen as a team, and it, it can change the whole course of a weekend. It can change the whole course of a season. Ralston's going to have to fight back in this thing. 3-0 count. And there's strike number one. Now, 
Coulard is walked. So two on, one down. And here comes the first of the two home runs, Claire Tim. Solo shot to lead off the fifth inning. In Oklahoma State, we talk about the dangerous bats that they have coming up. You know exactly what they're thinking. Let's get out of here <laughs> yeah. early. Let's score a couple runs. Let's get out of here early. They, they were very hot bats last time through the lineup. They're looking to do in the sixth what they did in the fifth. Another home run out of Tim right here would close this thing down. Oklahoma State would need just three more runs. But now Rolston ahead in a count here, one, two. Ralston sends it home, and Tim fouls that one back. Another one-two pitch from Ralston. And foul ball here. Tim, they're able. Just able to catch up with that off-speed pitch, hits it right off of Knoll's shin guard. Tough break as a catcher. Yeah. Nothing you can do when you see that ball coming at you. Again, Knoll's just a freshman for Iowa State. One of many under underclassmen that have kind of been thrusted into large roles over the course of this season. And Tim continues to fight. And if there has been one story that has been a through line for both teams is nobody's going to go down easy. <laughs> no, no, there has not been a single easy out in this game. Not that there ever is in college softball, but these hitters today are, <laughs> they're making waves. They right. refuse to go down swinging. There we go. There's one. A strikeout there from Tim. Gets out number two. And here is Caroline Wong. Still waiting on that big hit out of her that we know she has in her bag. One for two today, coming off a single in the fifth. And what was a barrage of hits in that inning, four. They doubled that, four going into the inning, now sit at eight. Or sit at nine. Wong blasts that one deep and gone. Caroline Wong just hit the ball over the scoreboard in left center field. For those of you who don't realize, <laughs> that is a tall scoreboard. She just went over it. Left center field, you talk about the big hit that was she hasn't used yet this weekend. There it was. The cowgirl power has been on full display. Watch this hit. Just watch the ball. Track it, track it, track it over the scoreboard. Oklahoma State, they have been <laughs> what we expected coming into the series here today on the offensive end. We've now seen a three RBI triple. We've seen a two run blast, a three run blast, and a one run blast. So Oklahoma State finally getting these extra base hits. And in, in a big game for them, as, as we had said, you don't want to fall too far down out of the, the top of the Big 12 race. Going into this game really had implications for both teams. For Iowa State, I mean, Probably going into the weekend, you're saying, hey, let's try and steal one from them. Yeah. The fact of the matter is they came in and they stole two games from Oklahoma State. Huge weekend for Iowa State. I do not want to take away from that. But this game for Oklahoma State, they've came out and showed us why they are the number five team yeah. in the country.
So it is Rosie Davis, one, two count here, two down. Bases are cleared after that rocket by Wong. And she actually outscored Houston by herself last weekend. So if there's anything else you need to say about what kind of impact Caroline Wong has had on this Cowgirl program. Ralston trying to close down the top of the sixth inning here. Can't do it on this pitch now, full count. Davis trying to keep this run going for Oklahoma State. And she'll foul that one back. So 3-2 once again coming up. Put away pitch from Ralston. And <laughs> Davis is not going to let that happen quite yet. Davis, her last at bat, struck out looking, but has had a good weekend for the Cowgirls. Has put up two singles, as you mentioned, on Friday, a single today. She's seen the ball well. Absolutely. Certainly been one of those consistent bats for the Cowgirls over the course of the weekend. And now she'll send one deep. Make it four. Oklahoma State is feeling it. These bats have come alive. <laughs> they absolutely have. And this one, she didn't want to be outdone by Wong. She said, no. hey, watch me hit it over the scoreboard. I can, I can do, do it, do it too. too. Yeah. So coming into today, Iowa State led Oklahoma State in the home run category 3-0. Oklahoma State said, nah, we're not going to let that slide. They now have four all in this game. So now four runs have been scored with two outs in the inning, which brings up Godwin, who was, guess what, another one of those home runs. Home runs today by the two-hitter, three-hitter, four-hitter, and five-hitter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you need to ask where the, the strength of the lineup is. I, I think you found it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and again, Ralston had been rock solid against the Cowgirls on Friday and Saturday, but you teed it up. It, it's been a different team here today. And now Godwin. Puts it out into right field, and that will close down an explosive inning number six. It has me speechless how yeah. Iowa State, you know, kept them quiet for truly two and a half games this weekend. Play out in shallow left is made by the shortstop Bloodworth to send Ranchez down. There was a lot built up there. We knew yeah. the hits were coming. Mm -hmm. It was just a matter of when. We'll have a pinch hitter here. Tatum Johnson in for Tiana Poole. Again, Iowa State needs two runs at least to push this thing into inning number seven. Johnson has had a fun week here Tuesday, but faced off against her older sister who plays for DePaul. Seen her as a pinch hitter over the course of the weekend. 26 plate appearance on the season for the sophomore, batting 154, four hits. Limited hits, but always seems to be finding a way to get on base. Yes. Yeah, that OBP had a nice 450. First pitch to her, a ball. Watch that one for a strike, 1-1 one, one count here. I have to say, what a game by Lexi Kilfoyle yep. in the circle. She's done 
she has done her job. She has done what is asked of her. She's kept the ball down, and she has limited any damage from Iowa State. Iowa State on the day had the one hit by Carly Spellhog. And that was that was a hard hit ball, but other than yeah. that, I mean not much going for yeah. Iowa State offensively. And certainly all all the fans to the right of us in the orange Oklahoma State shirts gonna get their There's money's a worth. Hit. And Iowa State gets themselves a blast. Tatum Johnson steps in and delivers a run. I want to give you some perspective here on how ball, how far that ball just went. So behind our fence, there's about 15 feet of grass. Then there's a street that you just saw three cars drive by. Then there's a tree. <laughs> and now the homeowners across the street <laughs> have a nice souvenir in their yard. And it appears someone's going to walk across the street and go get it right now. I think it should be like golf rules. If you hit the ball in someone's yeah. yard, the homeowner gets right, to keep it. Right, right. You've seen a couple no doubters today. Power is on full display for both sides. As another pinch hitter here for Iowa State, it will be Sophie Morris. And the gentleman who got the ball finally just got to it <laughs> out by the tree in the front yard. So Iowa State still needs one more run to push this thing into a seventh inning. One down here, and again, pinch hitter, senior out of Johnston, Iowa, originally transferred on over from the University of Iowa, who's Iowa State's next opponent, should that get played on Tuesday. One-two count here for Kill Foil. Looking to get out number two, an inch that much closer to a win for the Cowgirls. Morris fouls that one off. Now into right field. Foils one two pitch swung on by Morris and she got her to go down swinging. And Lexi Kilfoyle able to come back after the towering home run with a strikeout of her own. So now Oklahoma State just one away it will be Ashley Minor. We know she has power, so don't know if we've got another home run in store. If you're just a fan of college softball and love seeing some power hitting, today was a great day to tune <laughs> yes. in. You saw five home runs. <laughs> and the three absolute just monster shots. And we had two over the scoreboard. One that was hit completely out of the ballpark across the street and in someone's front yard. Just towering yes. shots. Minor today. 0 for 1, she was hit in the second and flew out to Poulard over at third in the fourth. Got a bit of, lead, bit of a lead here in this count, 2-1. And two down for Iowa State. They need to get a two out rally to keep this thing going. Miner sends that one out into left, and Graf snatches that one to close down game number three in Ames. Oklahoma State gets one and a big one at that. Oklahoma State today, they brought 